hey guys welcome to another video i want to apologize first and foremost if this video's sound is not the best i decided to go ahead and do a voiceover in starbucks and the music was really loud so i stepped outside so there might be a little bit of wind and stuff so i really apologize about that since i'm a stay-at-home mom i don't have a lot of time so when i do i like to treat myself and i decided to go to starbucks to do this voiceover i wanted to get out of the house a little bit but this video is going to be doing a gouache illustration of really gouache to be exact of matilda the movie from 1996. i'm pretty sure if you look at it really quick you could already tell that it doesn't really look like the style of a realistic painting it's not i tried to do it in a variation that's more like my artistic style i don't really know if that came out great but i have to say that i do enjoy the style so i'm happy with it anyways as you can see here when i first started out i did start out with a I didn't start out with a border and honestly I haven't been doing that for the paintings in the past but now I decided to put a border over it just to make it more crisp lines because I realized when I'm going to print this as an art print or anything like that it's a little bit hard to it, it looks kind of rough because the negative space which would be the canvas paper and the paper that is printed on it looks just kind of jagged and it just it doesn't look right i don't know really how to explain that but it, it just looks better if there's a clean line between the art itself and the printing paper so i decided to keep that in mind when i was doing this for future art prints you're also going to see that the colors that i originally put are not necessarily the colors that will be at the end sometimes i work like that and a lot of the reason why i do that is just because i don't want to waste the paint acrylic wash is really expensive which actually kind of makes me think sometimes that maybe i'll be better off when i am done with them if i'm better off with just regular acrylic even though it's not matte but yeah that's something that i have to look into and kind of decide i really do enjoy the matteness of acrylic wash though so probably gonna stick with that but who knows my mind changes so much i'm very indecisive but yes the original color of the hair that's going on and the original color of the chair or not the chair the table it's going to be a different color you'll see and also the plate don't worry about that plate as i'm drawing the garden in the back in the window if you're wondering what drink i got from starbucks it's a matcha latte with oat milk and still whipped cream um that's my favorite so far now before it used to be the pumpkin spice and once that season was over originally before that it was a vanilla bean because i didn't really like the taste of coffee but now i do and i love it but matcha tastes awesome um tried it for the first time a couple months ago and yeah, i haven't i haven't looked back so the reference picture that i have in the reference picture matilda is wearing a blue shirt it's a little bit more blue than this it's actually like a regular more you know traditional blue sky blue i guess I, I don't really know what to call it but this is a misty blue from holbein Ac acrylic gouache and i just love this color so much so whenever i have a chance to implement it into something this mixed with the olive green and orange these are like my favorite colors okay so her ribbon is red so i decided to keep that to the color and then i moved on to the milk carton now it was a little bit difficult for me because I'm not very good with the hand lettering when it comes to like writing down the milk or anything like that. I really didn't know what to do exactly with the milk carton to make it look not realistic but have some degree of dimension. Um, I think towards the end it did come out good and I honestly I rely a lot on towards the end redefining things, adding texture with colored pencils adding shadows adding highlights i really rely on that in order to make this piece what i want it to be so you're gonna see me adding play cards playing cards to this scene now technically in this scene she doesn't have playing cards really what's going on is she's holding the milk well she's using telekinetic powers to hold the milk cartridge up and pour the milk for her um there is a cheerio box in this scene but i decided to take it out and i decided to add the playing cards instead um sorry sometimes i like when i'm recording i really like i have a 
I struggle with using words. I'm so sorry about that. But yes, um, and here we go. You see, I am adding the browns. I'm adding the browns to this table because this table wasn't originally in the reference picture purple. <laughs> but yeah, it's. I don't know maybe the fact that I do add these these serve as an underpainting and makes it a little bit better um, so maybe that's a good thing but yeah in the beginning I just try to save as much paint as I can and I try to implement it to a lot of things and hopefully they work well as an underpainting that's what I'm telling myself <laughs> anyways yeah so I decided to add the playing cards because there's another scene when she's in the living room and the playing cards are like spend it over the air you know so i thought it gave it a little extra touch a little bit more interest than just the milk carton alone since i wasn't adding the cheerio box speaking of cheerio box i really enjoy drawing these cheerios when i drew them they made me so happy it made me feel like this piece was coming to life i don't know um I wasn't really conscious about the perspective about them either they're a little bit all over the place and they don't look necessarily correct as well as you know as far as perspective goes but i just had so much fun drawing the cheerios i don't know why and my favorite part of this painting by the way so far at this point is the little blue hearts as a wallpaper in the background against that yellowish olive green and one thing i've learned as i'm drawing the little details on the playing cards is that sometimes things need to be suggestive and they don't need to be literal so i don't literally need to draw exactly the way that it is in the playing cards i don't need to do that i just need to make it look representative of that and the viewer can tell what it is um i've learned that that helps a lot especially because you don't want something that is so extremely busy that there's no focal point in mind that being said i think there is a level of complexity to this piece in the sense that there is a lot going on um but i do try to keep in mind now more than ever that there is a focal point to a picture and that not everything has to be in focus i'm also a little bit aware that the style of character design is a little bit weird um i don't know what to say about that i really enjoy drawing it this way i enjoy the process of drawing it this way but i don't know if the person the viewer the, the art collector or whoever is looking or purchasing my art necessarily appreciates the style um but that being said a lot of styles are very weird and off and as long as you're consistent with it i think sometimes you train the person or the audience to like it usually the first thing that i go to is the face that's what i like to paint with first but i realize a lot now that when i go directly to the face first it kind of just it it doesn't go with the rest of the painting i kind of need to do the background or large pieces in order to get the mood of what type of color scheme i'm looking for because although i try to plan color schemes ahead of time i don't always follow it a lot of times i just go on a whim and i just use my intuition and just go by that instead of following the color scheme that i had originally planned also because i'm not that great at mixing yet so because i'm not that great at mixing a lot of times i just settle for colors that are not the exact that i wanted to use in the first place so what i did is i like to focus on the background first get the feel the mood the hues and tints of the background and then focus on the character itself and apply that lighting or that feel or that aesthetic to the character after otherwise i would just be painting the character doing the background and then repainting the character again to match the background Okay, so I have to say, when I drew these little white lines, or they're not literally white, but I guess white lines over the hair, I really liked how it came out. 
before it was just like giant shapes and I really didn't know what I was gonna do with it but now just adding the little lines just made me feel so nice and then later on in the future when I'm adding the shading and stuff like that it just comes to life more and I really like it on the right side I'm not really sure if I'm gonna use this piece right here what I'm saying is I might cut this drawing maybe a little bit and because I feel like there's a lot of empty space on the right side even and I added a door there as you can see but it just didn't it, it just didn't work for me there's like a lot of empty space on that table and I I, I don't know I might have to cut it that being said as you can see here I already added the colored pencils and I really do apologize I didn't do that beforehand and the reason or I didn't record it and the reason why I didn't record it was because it was late at night I couldn't sleep I was obsessed about this and I really wanted to see how it would come out with the colored pencils and I didn't bother to record it so I do apologize that but um, that being said, I do want to show you guys because I tried doing kind of like a wash with the acrylic paint over it to add to the shadows and stuff. And I think it worked. Now, I don't know how well this, is, this will work as far as longevity, but a lot of the painting and the art that I do is more for art prints rather than selling originals. Um, so I'm fine as long as it shows up and it looks good as an art print. I think one way in going about the glazes is to actually use a medium for it. So there's like a blending medium that you can use. It makes it a lot thinner and so it makes it translucent. That would be a great way to put it, I believe. I, could, I just couldn't find it. I, I was kind of looking for my art stuff and it was kind of... I was kind of like in a time crunch so I couldn't find it but I, I know I have it somewhere and I do want to try that later on I want to try it and see because if it works with acrylic wash which I sh it should because acrylic wash is just acrylic matted down um, or so I've heard then that would be a great solution for it instead of watering down the acrylic and losing a little bit of the binding agent that it has if you don't want to do that however you can also just edit it on uh, digitally just go to photoshop or appropriate i like to use appropriate it's very simple it's very easy and it's just a one-time cost um but you can just go to procreate maybe put an overlay layer and you can just add the finishing touches adding the shading and all those things to it without altering the piece just think that you wouldn't really be selling the original or you'd be selling the original as a different way then you would do the art print then i added these little stars and squiggly lines and stuff because why not everybody on youtube likes to add little stars and squiggly lines to their art pieces and i just thought because this is kind of like a little bit of a magical kind of feel to it i thought it would be quirky and cute so there you go i added the little stars the very little stars that youtubers love to paint I guess that just makes me an official YouTuber now. Then I decided to add these little pink lines to the table as well. And the reason for that is because I wanted to kind of change a little bit of the feel of the color scheme. I feel like it was a little bit too warm or a little bit too yellow. And so I decided to add that pink to kind of help with the color scheme a little bit, if that makes sense. And like I said earlier, don't worry, that plate is going to be painted. Oh my goodness, it was bugging me. I will have to say that a lot of times I will quote unquote finish a painting and then when I look back, I realize I missed a big noticeable chunk of it because I'm so worried about finishing it quickly just trying to be more efficient and just trying to get on to the next painting um i don't like doing that i think that's something that i definitely need to work on i need to take my time and i need to enjoy the process i did enjoy the process i, I just need to be more in the moment yay we're finally painting the bowl we're finally painting the bowl and so i did it like two tones a little bit lighter yellow a little bit darker yellow and yeah made a bit of a difference but you see there's a lot of yellow going on so it needs a little bit of pink or a cool tones to kind of like balance it out 
and this is the part that I guess most people enjoy which is taking the tape off um, so I find it that if you see here I kind of let the tape stay close to the paper you see I don't like just lift it high up my fingers always close to the paper and I I took that from oh sorry that's caught hold on all right so I took the tape I took the tape off just because in that way because I saw how other YouTubes have done it and it really does help so you don't rip the paper so keep your finger or keep the paper in the angle that I'm that you're seeing right here it will help you so much when it comes to not ripping or damaging the paper By the way guys, please let me know if you have any ideas as to what I should draw next. I do have a painting coming up next, but if you have any ideas of anything that I should draw, I would definitely take it into consideration. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. If you stay to the end, truly, truly thank you so much. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you got a little something out of it. And I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one. See you.